Hi, my name is Christine Hartelt. I am Peter Wooten's mother. We chose to include You Are My Sunshine because I used to sing that song to Peter and to his older brother, Nick. The necklaces I am wearing are also a tribute to Peter. The beaded necklace was made by Peter in second grade from World Up Magazines. The, the pendant was one that Peter picked out when his stepmom, Jill, took him to um, shop for a Christmas present for me. Um, when I was pregnant with Peter, I chose his first name. I really like the name and like the fact variations of the name are found in many languages. When Peter was taking high school French, his name in class was Pierre. Peter's dad chose Peter's middle name, Elijah. Peter's surname, obviously, is one he shares with his dad. When Peter was born, I had asked the doctor in my birth plan to lay the baby on my chest before the umbilical cord was cut. I remember looking down at Peter and wondering who this little person was. I knew he would have his own unique personality and interests, but I didn't yet know what they would be. As it turns out, except for about three months of colic, Peter was such a happy, mellow baby and toddler that we called him Smiling Peter. One of my favorite memories of Peter from his preschool days was the experiments he conducted in our kitchen. I gave him food coloring, salt, pepper, anything inexpensive and non-toxic. Sometimes Peter conducted his experiments when his brother was in school, and sometimes they did them together. By the time Peter was in middle school, Peter's interests were becoming well-defined. I sent this email on February 24, 2007 to my friend Alyssa. I wrote, Peter and I were driving in the car this morning on the way to the library. As usual, Peter wanted to listen to his favorite heavy metal radio station. Peter, Peter's favorite band right now is Disturbed. That gives you some idea of the noise level and style of this music. <laughs> As we drove down a hill, I turned off the radio and I said, is that a siren? Then I said, oh no, it must have been the music, and turned the radio back on. Peter and I looked at each other and burst out laughing. I was laughing so hard, I had tears running down my cheeks as we turned onto Old Sock Road. Neither of us could stop laughing until we got to the library. As an adult, Peter played music for me that he was working on. He was very excited that he and his musical partner in Nightfall Heroes got Megan McDuffie to sing on one of their tracks, Starlight Syndicate. Peter and I also shared a love of writing, languages, and photography. We also had or have a tendency to dive deep into research. For reasons I can't explain, we both loved mountains, even though both of us spent most of our lives in the upper Midwest. Unfortunately, the last two years of Peter's life brought one crisis after another. I know from my own experience that even the strongest person has a breaking point. Peter's mental health deteriorated greatly after the car accident on January 11th, in which Peter's car was totaled. The other driver admitted fault, but it was Peter who was left with the physical and mental symptoms resulting from a concussion. On February 13th, Peter sent me a text saying, his brain was broken, and asking me, me to take him to St. Mary's Hospital. St. Mary's had no beds that night, so the next day when I was trying to get Peter to a hospital, he jumped out of my car at 25 miles per hour. It was Valentine's Day. Peter cut off contact with me as he cut off contact with so many people who cared about him. However, four days before he died, Peter texted me that he wanted to rekindle our relationship. I tried frantically to text and call him. His attorney told me Peter sometimes forgot when Peter blocked his attorney's number. A concussion can affect memory. I think Peter forgot he blocked my phone number. His illness caused him to push away some of the people who loved him most. He became increasingly isolated and lonely, paranoid and delusional at times with several hospitalizations. What he wrote at Christmas time in 2022, I think, is a truer legacy of who Peter really was. He wrote, Hi, Mom. Thank you so much for your never-ending love and support. I don't know how I would have gotten through this year without you, and I'll never forget that, Peter. Peter wanted a secular memorial service, and his family has respected his wishes. I do appreciate all the prayers that have been said for Peter. 
Peter was a sensitive person. One doctor called Peter an old soul. I think the history of religious conflicts he learned about as he grew older turned Peter away from religion. On February 10, 1997, Peter and I had the following conversation. I said, I love you, Peter. You're such a sweetheart. Peter said, I'm not a sweetheart. I am an angel. As a two-year-old with big blue eyes and blonde curls, Peter really did look like a stereotypical angel. Personally, I think Peter exists in some form now where he is no longer suffering and at peace. Peter was a huge Buzz Lightyear fan when he was about six. For the rest of Peter's life, I wrote in cards to Peter and to his brother Nick, I love you to infinity and beyond. Peter, I love you to infinity and beyond. <laughs>